Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house yeah. of the Lord. It's so wonderful to just, to, just to be among brothers, brothers yeah. and sisters, you know. Um, that's not the scripture that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read, but, um, but you, know, it's, you know, it is a good one. It is a good one. But let's uh, just go ahead and stand and, and read from Psalms 145, verses 3 through 8. 145, verses 3 through 8. And first of all, I want to say, welcome. Welcome to the house of God. Amen. Welcome to South East Assembly. Yeah. It's good to see each of you here. Um, and um, bienvenidos a todos los que están, uh, están uh, acompañándonos via Facebook. Bienvenidos a cada uno de ustedes. Uh, gracias por, por acompañarnos en esta noche. So, Psalm, Salmo 145, versículos 3 al 8, dice, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Amen. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious <laughs> splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome work. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness. And joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate and slow to anger and rich in love. Amen. Grande Amen. es el Señor y digno de toda alabanza. Su grandeza es insondable. Cada generación celebrará tus obras y proclamará tus proezas. Se hablará de esplendor de, de tu gloria y majestad. Y yo meditaré en tus oh, obras maravillosas. Se hablará del poder de, su, de tu, tu portentos. Y yo anunciaré la grandeza de, tu, de tus obras. Te proclamarán la memoria de tu inmensa bondad y se cantará con júbilo tu victoria. El Señor es clemente y compasivo, lento para la ira y grande en amor. Praise the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you once again. Thank you, giving you praise and honor for indeed you are a mighty God. We know, my Lord, the great and mighty deeds that you've performed among us, my Lord, even this week, even today, my Lord, and we just give you glory and honor. And Father, we pray that as we lift up our voices and our hands, Lord, and our hearts unto you, Lord, that you receive these praises, my Lord, as we bless your name, my Lord, and that you send your Holy Spirit to move in this place, that no soul, my Lord, will remain empty or, 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 or cold, Father, because indeed you move in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, we praise you and we give you glory and honor. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, each and every one of you. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to recite uh, Psalms 145 9. The Lord is good to all, yeah. and his tender mercies are over all his works. Yeah. Amen. The Lord is good. The Lord is good, amen, and his mercy endures forever. Amen. amen. Praise God.
Amen, amen. At this moment, I would like to ask uh, whether Andy. Andy, can you pray for the offering that's going to be received? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Dear Lord, we come before you, give it unto you, as you are worthy of everything all belongs to you, Lord. We just come to you humbly, and as you would bless the tithes and offerings, bless the, the uh, substance that comes to you. Uh, you are just an awesome God who we worship and embrace. And we thank you for everything, Lord. We pray that you would uh, multiply it and just uh, bring it into your kingdom for your glory and to uh, further populate heaven to bring souls in, Lord. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Is, is always 
faithful, faithful mm -hmm. Lord. So if you have it, you can say amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus. Once again, I ask that you would establish my thoughts. Bless your children. Help me, Lord. I can't do anything without you. In Jesus' precious name, we praise you and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's read uh, verse 1. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go, or when can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God, under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, so I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can take your seats. Praise the Lord. You know, if there's one thing that uh, uh, I, I uh, experience from time to time is a, this incredible uh, thirst and yearning for the Word of God. And, and you know, we read the Bible at home daily. Uh, we pray. I journal my prayers and I call out to the Lord. But somehow, one way or another, there's a disquietness. I don't even get to en mi espíritu y quiero más del Señor. Quiero más y más. Eh, aún en versículo 1 dice, ¿Cuál siervo jadeadamente en busca del agua? Así te busca, oh Dios, todo mi ser. Tengo sed de Dios, el Dios de la vida. ¿Cuándo podré presentarme ante Dios? Mis lágrimas son... Uh, mi pan de día y de noche, mientras me echan en cara a todas horas. ¿Dónde está tu Dios? You know, and uh, you know that lying devil, he's good at it because that's what he is. He's just lying and he'll tell you, you know what? You haven't talked to God in a long time. God's not answering your prayer. Nothing you seem to call out for is coming to pass. And uh, you know, uh, being downcast, or in the Hebrew, it literally means bowed down, is not a good position, and it certainly doesn't feel good, because that is just showing, that's physically showing that you're so defeated, so downcast, so helpless, and it's not a good thing. And uh, so... It seems like our prayers aren't answered sometimes, like I said. Sometimes I pray like, oh my gosh, it doesn't seem like my prayers are going through the roof. I can hear them here, but it doesn't seem to go any further than here, or does it get here? And you know, there's some dry spells that you and I go through once in a while, and maybe uh, not as often as some, but we get there from time to time. And the idea is here is that this psalmist is calling out during a time that was probably when he was in exile. And uh, his son Absalom was chasing David, persecuting him constantly. And David was away from temple worship. Everybody say temple worship. We just had temple worship. We just praised God. We felt the presence of Almighty God. And I pray that those of you by Facebook and, and YouTube and if you ever feel this, this disquietness in your soul and everything, come to the house of God. Amen. Come and yeah. praise Him and give Him honor yeah. and glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And, well, the idea here is that this psalmist wrote, and he says, just like the deer or the heart in King James, it says he, he pants for water. An animal that is being chased, uh, I read a, a commentary one time when hunters would go out deer hunting, they would chase the deer and the deer would run everywhere and to lose his trail, he'd jump in the stream 
and only stick his nose up above water. That not only saved his life, but it's always a good thing to drink water. It satisfies the soul. And he's saying, just like a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O oh God. Mm. And, and it's not a, a, an easy thing or, or a light thing, because you see, here in verse 5, he's saying, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? He's asking powerful questions. You know, every once in a while when you're alone and, and maybe no one else is there, you can ask God these questions you wouldn't ask in front of somebody else. You can ask, How come, ¿Por qué estoy tan inquieto? No sé, no sé qué hacer. Sé lo que quiero, pero no puedo. Aún no tengo ganas. ¿Por qué está, eh, estoy tan desanimado? Why am I so uh, uh, disoriented? I don't have any, man, I have no gumption. I have no, I don't want to do anything. But I know what I need. And so here he's asking a, a powerful question. Now if you look at verse 11, he says, Why, my soul, are you downcast? One more time, he said, why? You know that the questions that go through your mind, the questions that go through my mind when I'm disquieted and everything, I want to find out why I'm doing it. I'm a why kind of person. In Bible school, some people would ask questions and go toe to toe with people and everything, and I just sit there and watch. And I listen. And the words that you didn't want to use or anyone didn't want to use at that time raise red flags. Because sometimes, one way or another, we tend to draw our attention away from ourselves. And we'll blame this situation or that, or we'll look at something else, but it's not ourselves. And so this person asks one more time, why, my soul, are you <coughs> downcast? Why so disturbed with me, within me? He says, put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Notice how he's encouraging himself. Se está animando a sí mismo. Está diciendo, ¿por qué voy a inquietarme? ¿Por qué se inquieta uno? ¿Y para qué quiere estar inquieto? Es miseria. It's misery to get uh, disquieted. It's it. ¿Por qué me voy a angustiar? En Dios pondré mi esperanza y todavía lo alabaré. Él es mi Salvador y mi Dios. Sabes que cuando uno pone su esperanza en Dios, hecho a hace echar fuera toda inquietud, Amen. todo desánimo, hace hacer todas estas cosas, porque cuando uno empieza a alabar a Dios, su presencia se manifiesta. Yes, ¿no? <laughs> Vamos, say that in English. Oh, yeah. The idea is that, why are you so downcast? Why are you so disturbed with this? <coughs> Who wants to be in misery? Who no, he said. Put your hope in God, he's yes, saying, amen. for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Not only is Jesus Christ your Savior, but he's Almighty God, yes? yes. He, can, he created heaven and earth. He hung every star in heaven. Yes. And he knows them by name. Mm -hmm. He knows you, and he knows you, and he so knows I, me by I, name. Yes. So why are you walking around like you don't know what to do? Why are you walking around like, what? What's next? What am I good for? Have you ever thought at one point or another, will I ever live to be 30 years old? Will you be 60 years old? When I was 60 years old at school, everybody was, they were going, uh, Mr. Steve, why are you so happy? And I said, well, you know, I've never been 60 before. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, that feels good. And, and as tough as things were, and as a trouble magnet as I was, you didn't think anybody would make it to 60 years old, especially me. Yeah. Notice how I point to me. I didn't think I was going to get there. But you see, uh, you think about work, you think about your life, you think about when am I going to get married? Is that beautiful girl out there? Is that handsome young man out there? Let me ask you a question. Do you qualify? Mm. Ouch. Ouch. Hello. You know, in Bible school, this, and me and this uh, brother were talking, and he just totally was smitten. I mean, he got smoke. Train wreck smoke. 
And he saw this young lady and she preached that day and everything and he was just told. And I looked at him and I'm going, what? That boy is gone. He is not here. And he was just looking at her and he says, wow. And then so after the service and everything like that, everybody's having food and fellowship. And he says, you know what? He says, God told me that she was going to be my wife. And I go, <clears throat> I spit out my soda and I go, you too? And she was like, what? And let me ask you a question. Why do you worry about all of these things when you're not even worried about a relationship with Almighty God? Now you see, you can't, you can't feed the flesh and praise God. That's right. And so he, and you know, and he looked at me and then I, I did it on purpose. Because I had somebody looking at me. I'd just be watching her. And uh, so anyway, I asked him, do you even qualify? Mm. Let me ask you a question. Right now, you might not feel like you qualify to have a relationship with God. But he'll meet you halfway. Yes. You yes. come to him and he'll run to you. Yes. He'll embrace you. He'll love you. He'll take you just the way you are. Yes. And uh, yes. so that's what, and he's saying, put your hope in God, my Savior and my God. Look at verse, look at Psalms 43. One more time in verse 5. You don't get over depression right away. You don't get over these thoughts of, what am I going to do? Uno no se le olvida, no se le va a pasar, no va a ser librado en un salmo, en un verso, en una hora o en una semana. Tienes que buscar de Dios. Y el versículo 5 dice, ¿Por qué me voy a inquietarme? ¿Por qué me voy a angustiar? En Dios pondré mi esperanza y todavía le alabaré. Él es mi salvador y mi Dios. Para que se repite, ¿verdad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He repeats himself. He says, why, why my soul are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? Now, those are pointed questions. Uh, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Yes. Ain't nobody can do you like Jesus. He can save you at all times. He can help you when you're so depressed, so downcast. Nobody else can say They walk around you and they go, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, they walk away. They don't want to get rained on. They don't want to get hit by lightning. That cloud is too dark over you. And uh, so this psalmist is saying, Oh, when can I go meet with God? Uh, you know, this, these verses, verse 5, Verse 11, and in chapter 43, verse 5, one more time, makes for painful thinking. Have you ever thought about that? Sometimes you think about it so much, you, went, you, 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 you create a headache. And if you're that susceptible to stress and everything, you got migraines. <laughs> and uh, the, the idea is, that it can be very emotional, it can be a very emotional time for us, yeah. for you. Yeah. If, you're not, if you're not calling out to the Lord and saying, you know what, I know that you're my Savior. Yeah. Yeah. I know you never leave me nor forsake me. Yeah. I know in times yeah. of trouble yeah. you will deliver yeah. me. Uh -huh. I know all these things, so why am I going to disquiet yeah. myself? Yeah. That's a heavy word in Spanish, is inquietud. Why are you going to get in so much uh, uh, trial, what, uh, angustia? Why do you anguish yourself? And uh, the idea here is that uh, when uh, at least, listen, at least he has a one-sided, apparently, a one-sided, but the upside of it is an open conversation with God. Yes. I have plenty of those. Been there and done that. And it seems like it's only one-sided. I call it, and you know, that stems from the religious way you came from before you came to Jesus Christ. You decided when you felt enough pain. You decided when it was good enough for you to repent and say, okay, now I'm forgiven. But that's not the Jesus we serve. That's not the God that we serve. 
because you know you have peace in your heart, you have peace in your mind when God does the work in you. And so uh, you have a, 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 it'll seem like it's one-sided, but you're having an open, uh, an open dialogue, an open conversation in hope, in hope that you'll find out why you're in the mess that you're in. He said mess. He said, why are you in the situation that you're in? And, uh, and so uh, when there's no voice from God, it's scary. You, like myself, I I, got, I, I write out my prayer and and I'll, uh, you know, write my, yeah, and the reason why I do that, because in, in, in journaling, in, you're so brutally honest, but you wouldn't be that way with your partner. You wouldn't be that way with your spouse or your friend, would you? What are they going to do with that information? How are they going to look at me? At this point in my weakness, how are they going to, are they going to be like some of those people that say, well, where's your God? Yeah. Where is your God? Mm -hmm. After a while, you'll be thinking, you know what, where is my God? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. And that's not good. Right. And so, uh, you know, you might feel uh, loneliness, you might feel alienated, quizás te sientes uh, atribulado, alejado. Sus sentimientos son uno de uno uh, desamparado, pero Dios nunca nos desampara. Thank you, Lord. And uh, you might feel like you've been uh, left, and but you know what? Jesus said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Right. You might feel yes. forsaken, yes. but you'll never do it. All you have to do is call out and say, Lord, you are my Savior. Yes. Do you know that if you and I persevere, we're going to triumph? Amen. Yes. Yes. Somebody yes. say amen. Yes. That's what it is. And, and I'm telling you, children, that when God does a mighty work in you, you can't help it but praise Him. Yes, that's yes. right. Uh, it, look, I don't, look, and I do care. Uh, we've taken that turn to where it's just so, uh, it's meaningless, you know. I don't care what you're going through. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do care what you're doing. So does God. Yes. And did you know that whatever you're going through, when you call out to Almighty God, He'll deliver you. Yes. He'll say, uh, you know, I'm with you. He'll give you His peace. And whatever, if you look back at all the trials you went through, the only sustenance that you had was God's hand in your yeah. life. Yeah. Because you made it up to here. Yeah. And this suffering and pain that you went through was just last year. It was during the pandemic when the pandemic started. Many people were so disquieted. They were, you know what the scripture says? That there'll be perilous times. If I'm not mistaken, that word perilous in the Greek means anxious. It means anxious times. You'll be so anxious and so worried about where can I go? What do I got to do? This mess kills me. I'm just bothered by it and everything. You work yourself into a frenzy. And... Uh, and so, but here, let's look at it. Let's go back to verse 1. Uh, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for my God. Amen. The deer, like I said, <coughs> will run, whether it's being chased, persecuted, and that's the idea here. Because just like a deer is being hunted down, so was this situation possibly, but I can't prove it, but Possibly was a situation with David and Absalom. He was being persecuted. He was being chased. And all he wanted was to get into the living water, Almighty God. Yes. And just like a deer goes out and looks for water, his soul, Nepeth's soul, intensely <coughs> looks for water. Uh, how thirsty are you? Mm. When you're in trouble, uh, are you so numbed out that you can't call out to God? How many days are you going to go knee deep in trouble without calling to God? ¿Qué tantos días vas a pasar sin clamarle a Dios porque estás muy afligido y enfocando en tu situación en mes de buscar el que te puede librar? Eso es Dios Todopoderoso. You know, so... 
uh, you know, and so the psalmist is saying the same way. The same way that doe, that deer, that heart is looking for water, so am I. Intense. Everybody say intense. Yes. We got to be intense about it. I sat here earlier and I said, Lord, how long am I going to suffer with? And then I said, well, you know what? It's your will. But my question was still, how, uh, how long? We all want to know something. You know, why am I so disquieted? Why? Don't I trust in God? He's my Savior. He's my God. He's my deliverer. He's my healer. He's everything that I ever need. And so I just have to trust. Tengo que confiar en Dios Todopoderoso. So I'm saying, uh, have you ever had a, a, a hunger and a thirst for worship? Just worship. You didn't even have to hear a message. I just want to praise God. I just want to feel His presence. And let me tell you, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, now is a good time. Today is a day of salvation. Now you can call out to the Lord. And His presence will give you such a peace of mind and heart that no one else can give you. And you need to call out to Him. You know, uh, like I said, that during this pandemic has caused a great deal of isolation. Come on. Durante este tiempo de la pandemia ha causado un gran tiempo de apartamiento. Nos hemos apartado yes. de alabar a Dios yes. en el templo. Yes. Yes. You know, we, uh, there's been a, such a, uh, uh, a, a distance, yes, it's a distance away from the temple worship. Yes. This psalmist was saying, and the idea is that because they were in, in, in exile, one theory is that they were sold into, uh, or they escaped into Babylon, and uh, Syria, and uh, out in the mountains, in the caves, in the deserts, and everything. Either way, what is what is keeping you? Who, who is your captain? What's keeping you from praising God? What, what is your desert experience? Why do you run, and why do you even call out to the Lord in this situation and say, I, I, I'm thirsty for you? Because we all need yes. the Lord. Amen. We need Jesus Christ. Amen. So, uh, so uh, the, this, this distance, this great isolation from temple worship for many, many, many believers all over the world. Don't think you're just here in the hood or in the town up here and, or that big church over there. It's happened everywhere. Yes, amen. That's right. It's affected everyone. And that's when we should call out to the Lord. You are my Savior. Thank you, Lord. Yes. You are my God. Look yes. again. You cleanse yes. me and you heal me. Yes. We recite Psalms 91. And I, I, I do it. And I believe in it. And I stand on it. That's something that we ought to look into. Make it your daily prayer. Uh, your nighttime prayer before you go to sleep. We should be able to call out to God in all the time. And, uh, and that's a good and legitimate reason. Sometimes people stay away from uh, temple, uh, and I'm saying temple, temple worship, message, and everything like this for legitimate reasons and some not so legitimate. Yeah. And uh, so at any rate, searching for God is very, very important, especially during this time. It doesn't matter how old we are. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what rung in society you are and everything. And, and, you, and you could be way up there or just climbing the ladder. Yes. The idea is that we can't get anywhere and maintain our situation unless we call out to God. Tenemos y necesitamos a Dios. Let's go to Psalms 84. I want to read four verses for you. Actually, the whole Psalm 84 is amazing. Totally amazing. But I just want to read uh, four verses. And the first four verses. Salmos 84, los primeros cuatro versículos. It's saying, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. And you know, this is a, I think, we have a nice chapel. Amen. But you know, 
the loveliest temple that we have, that anybody can have, is you. Yes, the yes. temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. And they say, my soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself. Where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever, they are ever praising you. Isn't that something? So the more that you come to the, the house of God, the more prone you are to praise Him and give Him honor and glory for the very fact that you're alive, that you're healthy, that you have provision, and that you can come and go and give Him honor and glory. Isn't that something? I think that's great. That's a wonderful thing. Juan, hermosos son tus moradas, Señor Todopoderoso. Anhelo con él, alma los atrios uh, del Señor. Casi agonizo por estar en ellos. Con el corazón, con todo el cuerpo, canto alegre al Dios de la vida. Él es el Dios de la vida. He's the yes. God of Almighty. He's Almighty God of life. Yes. And so that's very, very important. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, Psalms uh, 42 again and let's look at verse 2. Those by the way, uh, my main text, verse 1 and 2. And uh, the other ones were just to get me preaching, and I got like two pages worth of scripture. Uh, well, everybody's going, hallelujah. Jesus, help me. Look at verse 2. He, and look at that uh, second part. Uh, we call it verse 2, part B, right? When can I go and meet with God? Cuando? Podré presentarme ante Dios. This is a good question. When? Uh, when do you want to feel His presence? When do you want answers? When will you get off the fence? When? Now it's a rhetorical question. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to say like right now. You don't. Have, you know. Don't give me that look like right now. When? You know, the fence is just wide enough and strong enough for everybody. Mm, I, I, hey, hey, who said that? I, I've been on that. I've been on the fence, and I had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Because on a fence, you're neither here nor there. <coughs> you can't say yes, you can't say no, but in not doing so, you've already decided to just sit there and eventually die spiritually. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the question is, when? When are you going to praise the Lord? When you're ready? Mm. When you dress up nice enough? When you got some jingle in your pocket that you can leave in the offering? When? That's incredible. That's a question that we all have to answer. These questions, like I said, all put together, mushed together, is just one question. When? Yes. He said, when can I go and meet with God? His situation was being, uh, uh, oh, what was that word you said earlier? He was uh, estranged. He was uh, separated. And estaba uh, despierrado. Despierrado means he had no home, no place, no country, no place to go and praise God. So, what is your situation? I'm asking you, what are you going through? What is your desert experience? Who are your captives? What's keeping you? What's captivating your attention that draws you away from Almighty God? What is out there that keeps you from coming to church? What is out there that keeps you from praising God? Are you embarrassed? You don't want to be called Hallelujah, Bible Thumper, and all these other kind of names that I've been called, you've been called. <laughs> you got a list? <clears throat> you know, when? This man wants to meet with God in the temple, and it's an implied temple. He, he, wants, to, he wants to go see God. 
Do you know the hardest times in your life, all you can remember is like, hey, I remember, man, going to church, yeah, yeah. praising God, but you still won't go. Yeah, so know. when are you going? Cuando vas a ir? Hablé con un hombre hace tiempo y, y ya tenía años que no asistía al templo por X razón, qué sé yo, la vida. Y, y me dice, después del, 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 del uh, servicio de alabanza y cuánto, me dice, man, estos son los servicios que me gustan, estos son los que yo me acuerdo y todo. Y yo estaba pensando, estos son los que debes de vivir todo el tiempo. <risa> <risa> He was saying, uh, this man hadn't been in church for so long and uh, he came to church and after the service he says you know what these are the services that I miss these are the ones that I remember man they're so good and my mind was going well this is the one you should have been in and should keep on coming yeah, too yeah, yeah. the question is when yeah. when do you want to meet with the, uh, with the Lord how hungry are you I'm real hungry uh, the psalmist said he had his own question. Uh, I'm pretty sure he did. Everybody else around him was telling him, well, where's your God? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. No que decías que alababas a Dios y cuánto, mira, estás derrotado. Yeah. Look at you, you're defeated. You say you praise God, a mighty God. Well, look at you. Where is your God? And I bet you'll go home and you start thinking, where is my God? You know, Joe, let's go to Job chapter 3. Job chapter 3. This is a very profound book. It's captivating. It'll, it'll, uh, yikes. Let's start with verse 20. Verse 24 and through 26 is very, very important. But let's start with verse 20. Why is life given to those in misery and life to the bitter of soul? To those who long for death that does not come, who search for it more for hidden treasures, who are filled with gladness and rejoice when they reach the grave. Why is life given to a man whose way is hidden, whom God has hedged in? For sighing has become my daily food and my groans pour out like water. What I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quietness. I have no rest, but only turmoil. And you know what? Job, in its context, and you know how Satan came up before God, and he says, have you, and God asked him, have you considered my servant Job? Uh, he hasn't sinned and everything's an upright man and he says, yeah, but skin for skin, take everything away from him and he'll curse you. Yeah. And God, you know, he says, wait, well, you know what, go ahead, do whatever, but spare his life. You know that the devil can't touch your life, can't take your soul, can't do any of that without God's permission. That's right, man. You might go through thick and thin for undisclosed reasons. Je Job was saying, why is life given unto me? He cursed the day he was born. Yep. He says the day, uh, uh, verse 3, he says, May the day of my birth perish in the night that said, A boy is conceived. He was so troubled, he had gone through so much, and he was saying, No, look at all my sign, and all of the, I have no rest and everything. And you know what? The only one that can give any of us any rest is Almighty God. He's the one that can deliver. And, and, so, and the psalmist in Psalm 42 and verse 4, uh, he remembered. He said, these things I remember as I pour out my soul. And, and you're probably thinking, these things? What things, Pastor? I'm so glad you asked. You know what? I am so glad you asked. Because, he says, how I used to go to the house of God, under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. That means everybody else was praising God, and I was out there shouting. <laughs> you know, you're not going to keep me down. Yeah, there was this, this lady that was so used to Kent Revival. And uh, she was an elderly lady and decided to go to a church. Because the Tent Revival, the, the, the evangelist left and everything, so 
she goes to church. And in the back of the church, she would go, Amen, Pastor. And everybody would go, Oh my God. It was very quiet in that church. Nobody would clap. Nobody would say something. The preacher would say something. She'd go, Praise him, Pastor. And everybody was in the deacons were like, And so he goes, Go, go. And they picked her up and they took her out. He says, Praise the Lord, Pastor. Jesus came in with one donkey and I'm going out with two. <laughs> hey, praise God wherever you're at. My God, He's your Savior. He's your Lord God Almighty and He'll deliver you. Thank you, Jesus. This man remembered. He says, wait a minute. I remember when I was in, in temple worship and I praised God just like everybody else. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody help me. Yes. yes. Uh, he used to go to the house of God. Come on. So, verse 5, it says, So, why? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Let me ask you a question. What? Uh, have you ever worried about being saved, going to church, what people might say? Uh, have you ever worried about losing friends and everything? If the friends you have now can't help you, bye. Right? If they don't edify you, if they don't show you what's good, if they don't lift you up when you're down, bye. You need people that will lift you up. You need an almighty God that will save you, will deliver you. Don't stay on the, on the fence. Don't do that. Wait on the Lord. Why despair? ¿Por qué te, de, de, te angustias? ¿Por qué te desamparas a sí mismo pensando Dios no me está ayudando? Mm -hmm. Los que nos, lo que nos falta es oración y alabanza. Porque leer la palabra uno no puede leer. Pero si no alaba a Dios, si no ora, es el otro ingrediente para crecer espiritualmente. You know, anybody can read the Word of God. But if you're not praying and you're not worshiping Him, well, those two ingredients strengthen your reading power yeah, and strengthen yeah. your spiritual yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 being, and you'll be stronger than you were the day before. That's right. That's right. And you'll realize that God's always been with me. Yeah. Yes. God, when I, the days I cried and I was so lonely and despaired in it, God was there. Yes. Right yes. there. Yes. With yes. Me. Oh, thank you, Lord. And He helped me out. Yes, He did. He'll help you out. Yes. You'll do it. You are my God. I will praise you. Yes. You are my Savior and my God. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, you know, in, in John 3 16, I know it's a heart, but I love to read it. Everybody. Anybody like to read the word of God? Yes. And in verse 16 and 17, it says, and I'm doing it for the for the sake of those on Facebook and YouTube. If you don't have your Bible, if you don't have one, well, praise the Lord, I'm reading it to you. The word of God says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. There's nobody else that can say his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Yes. Through Jesus. That's the only way you're going to make it in life. Yes. You want a good job, you want a good life, you want a good family, you want, I don't whatever age we are, whatever situation you are in, call out to the Lord. He can help you. He will help you. Yes. In Romans 10, 13, the Bible says, uh, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. saved. Today yes. is the day of salvation. Hoy es el día de salvación. Toda que invoque el nombre del Señor Jesús será I want to pray with you right now, and, and if you if you haven't made the decision to ask Jesus into your heart, it's so easy, it's so simple. You don't have to work at it. It's not by works, it's by grace. It's a gift yes. of God. So I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, if there's anyone here, my Lord, 
that wants to accept you, anyone by Facebook and YouTube, Father, that would accept you as Lord and Savior of their life, my Lord, today, I pray that all they have to do is call out to you say, and say, Jesus, come into my heart, save me, I want to be born again. And that's exactly what will happen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. The altars are open. That we, we, we never like to go home without spending some time. And, and if you did it before, then praise the Lord. It's a good time to give Him honor and glory. Amen.